It's late fall and we're on one of the best crappie lakes in the state of Oklahoma, Lake Eufaula. It's a little bit unseasonably warm with water temperatures still in the 60s, but we're going to be targeting brush piles in 12 to 15 feet and using forward facing sonar to drop hand tied hair jigs on these crappie that are suspended around the brush piles. Can't wait to get out there and catch some. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Check that out. It's time for the only program that brings you real time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Cobia, big one. And a monster. Look Beautiful. at that. That's a Tawakini giant. This is Let's Fish. Today we're crappie fishing, late fall crappie fishing on Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma. Eufaula has long been known as one of the best crappie fishing lakes in the state of Oklahoma. At 102,000 surface acres, from one end of the lake to the other, this thing is filled with both black and white crappie. A little bit warmer than it typically is this time of the year. Water temperatures in the mid 60s, and the lake is also five foot low. What that's gonna do is mess with the crappies migrations as they try to move up the creeks for the fall feed. We're going to target brush piles on the lower end in 12 to 18 foot of water using hand tied hair jigs and dropping on these fish as they feed on thread thin shad that are living around these brush piles. We'll also have fishing reports from your local region from our inside reporters. I'm gonna get this boat in the water and get things ready to go. So for now, let's kick it back to the studio for your weekend planning. Hi everybody, so great to see you all. Thanks so much for joining us once again. The Salooner Tables are predicting fair game fish activity on both days this weekend. Peak morning hours begin around 6.16 on Saturday and 7.12 on Sunday morning. The best nighttime fishing will begin around 6.47 on Saturday and 7.39 on Sunday evening. Depending on your area, expect the sun to rise around 7.37 and set around 6.49. Evenings will feature a moon that's 43% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, I'll return with MLF angler Matt Becker. Stop by to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. Now that's just a little guy. But it gets things going. Uh, there's two different types of jigs that I like to use when I'm fishing in these brush piles and one of them is a uh, thin wire sickle style. Let me grab my box down here. The other one is more of a heavy gauge round bend and you can see the difference between those two hand tied jigs. This is, uh, these are both uh, 16 ounce hand tied hair jigs. The sickle style with the thin when I'm fishing around brush piles, this is 20 pound sunline braid that I'm using and when you get it hung up in a piece of wood or in the brush down there, that hook will open up and you'll actually be able to use the weight of your braid to keep your hook from, or to keep your jig from breaking off. Uh, you know, these can get a little bit pricey, three bucks a piece when you're getting these hand tied uh, crappie jigs and you're typically just hooking crappie so they're not going to bend your hook out so that can, little tip that can save you a lot of time if you're in, in and around a lot of cover that sickle style hook will pull out that hook will be a little bit softer and you can get your jig back more so than the round bend as in an open water or a bigger fish that's going to stick it and I don't want that flex with the hook so just a little guy to kick things off that fish was white and really in the middle of the brush pile which tells me that I'm going to have to slow down use micro adjustments and really put that jig in the fish's face horizontally to get them to commit today. Hey y'all, welcome to my favorite part of the show, the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia Coastal Fishing Report. This segment is brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Garmison with Ugly Fishing. You can check out my website at uglyfishing.com. You can book online as well as some money saving opportunities on the homepage with Salt Scone, LureNet.com, and Pure Flats Fishing, creator of the Slick Lure. Um, talk to uh, Ronnie Daniels, Fisherman Guide Service out of Past Christian, Mississippi. He said that the Bluxy Marsh is really coming to life now. He said the white shrimp, are the key ingredient to all of his fall fishing. He said the speckled trout are gonna be feeding on the white trout as well as some redfish. 
he said that the speckled trout are going to be feeding heavy on the shrimp so use shrimp imitations and and uh, you're going to have your most action look for those oyster reefs in the mid marsh areas to have the most life for speckled trout and white trout and he said also the redfish inside the marsh along the on the big points and along the shorelines on that incoming or on that outgoing tide or the falling tide i should say Talked to Mike Mosley Jr., top of the line charters out of Savannah, Georgia. He said that the trout, redfish, and flounder are all doing really well. He said the best thing he can tell you is to go get your cast net, go back in the creeks, catch you some live mullet, live um, uh, mud minnows, and go go put those things to work on those three species. On the ocean beaches for his, his area, the bull red bite is picking up and getting better every day. Along the Alabama Gulf Coast, bull reds are really starting to show up. The jacks are starting to move out. They're, everything's feeding really, really well and aggressive out on that Gulf Beach. So take you a little bit bigger tackle, go out there and have fun. Uh, also in the Alabama area, the, uh, the flounder bite has been good. The speckled trout bite's picking up and the uh, sheephead bite's also picking up. So a lot of opportunities out there on the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia coasts. Uh, thank y'all for checking out this report. Y'all keep what you need, leave the rest, and God bless, guys. So I'm a bass fisherman and I tournament bass fish. Actually, this reel that I have on this crappie rod right here is actually a bass reel that I was just using in a Bassmaster Open two weeks ago. Uh, it takes a little while to get used to it. It's, it's a very, if you're used to a seven foot rod, it's a very weird feeling to have a 12 foot rod. But these are relatively low price compared to high-end bass rods. For under $100, you can get into uh, a 12-foot medium action rod, take a reel off of your bass stuff when you're done bass fishing for the year. And all I use the reel for is line management. You have to think of this reel as just line management. I'm not casting, I'm simply swinging and dropping it directly over and using the length of the rod to get the bait away from the boat. If you saw that, I swung the crappie, there wasn't much reeling in. I probably only have about 50 yards of SX1 low-vis green braided line on this. And I have two setups and I'm good to go all winter long. <sighs> all right, that is a good sign there. That is a solid, probably about a one pound Oklahoma white crappie there. And you can really see the advantage when you're 20 foot down like that on using a 12 foot heavy rod. I know this is, uh, this is kind of becoming a little bit more popular over the last couple years. The medium action rod, but it's a really heavy rod. I would equate it to a, a flipping stick uh, for bass fishing. What it allows you to do is hold that bait vertically over the fish and not have to cast to it. You know, when you have a six, seven foot rod, you have a pendulum swing unless you're fishing under a cork. When you're using this hair jig, this allows you to hold it directly over the fish was able to watch that fish come right out of the brush pile and just suck that jig in right at the top. That's a really healthy, probably about a 12 and a half, 13 inch Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma crappie. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lake Hartwell Country. Catch the feeling, lose, feel the difference. Mamba boats, ride with pride. Strike King, tie one on. Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. There's a good one. They're just real slow and lethargic, which is odd considering how warm the water is. There's another keeper there. There's another little keeper probably pushing 10 inches, but you can see with that vertical presentation right in the top of the lip. Uh, gosh, he wasn't going anywhere. We'll let him go. All right, this is a very interesting year to, to crappie fish, uh, that kind of late fall, because it's very dependent on, uh, on water temperature and also water clarity. Uh, you know, where we are in Lake Eufaula, Eufaula really, 
uh, varies water color and temperature wise based on where you are in the lake uh, and kind of based on those two factors in the fall of the year water color and water temperature determines how shallow how active how close to the brush piles the crappie uh, will be we're dealing with some some fairly clear water here uh, and it hasn't been ex exceptionally uh, cold yet so what you're dealing with are crappie that are still kind of relating to those late summer early fall which means that they're really tight to the brush piles uh, and the key when you're looking at these brush piles, uh, the ones that, that have a lot of crappie in them, when you're either going over it on 2D, your 2D sonar uh, directly on top of the brush pile or locating it using your forward facing technology, uh, I don't want to be able to see, you know, clear branches and the entire brush pile. The ones that are really loaded with those crappie close to transition areas where those fish are are uh, uh, are going to be transitioning during that fall to winter transition uh, are going to just have gangbusters of fish on them and i'm going to actually uh use my lure to kind of disrupt their environment to catch a fish to see how they react and the good brush piles uh, will kind of look like one big glob of of uh, activity uh, with actually not a lot moving but then when you drop your jig just above the brush pile or into the brush pile and you get one fish to react that's when you see uh, the pile kind of start to separate and the individual fish start to show up so uh, it's a it's a unique uh, time of the year and when it comes to how long I'm going to fish uh, a brush pile if there are a lot of fish on that brush pile a lot of times the key is to get one to activate to get one fish uh to interact with with the jig with the minnow depending on what you're using and that can kind of trigger a lot of those other fish uh to to bite hey folks it is time for your carolinas report and i'm captain e here brought to you by crazy sister marina you know those guys over there have been doing it right for a long time now, introducing the new Crazy Sister Marina Tackle and Bait Shop downstairs. You can find everything you need to come do it yourself. If you don't want to go out with one of our captains and you're one of those that want to do it all yourself, we've got every bit of tackle, every bit of live bait, every frozen bait you could imagine that'll put you on the fish, whether it's inshore, near shore, or offshore. We've got everything right here at Crazy Sister Marina. Visit CrazySisterMarina.com for more information. Let's go to Lake Hartwell this week. We'll talk about what's going on up there. That beautiful lake, host of so many huge bass tournaments, in, including two or three Bassmaster Classics. The bite is on up there. It's that time of the year. They're feeding, they're gonna get full. They're ready for that cold temperature to get here and you can get out deep diving crankbaits, find those fish on rocky points, chasing those shad. You're gonna have a good time and let's move over to Santee where I was just at. That crappy bite is incredible. I was down on the lower lake at Lake Moultrie. Find a big brush pile, you're gonna have a lot of success. I was out throwing grubs, and I was also using those shiners. You get those crappy minnows down there on top of those piles, they can't say no. Using the live scope is cheating, and I'll tell you what, I'm proud to say that I was cheating and found several over two pounds. Now's the time, get out and find them. That water temperature's starting to drop. They're still holding tight to those brush piles. You can have a lot of success right now. Also, I want to mention our good friends at South Atlantic Fisheries Management Council have decided as of October 23rd to shut down possession of gag grouper. Now that is ridiculous and that's just my personal opinion, but it's terrible because right now those gag grouper are moving inshore. You can find them in 50 to 70 foot of water. This has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There's a good one. Another little keeper. They're just real slow and lethargic, which is odd considering how warm the water is, but before they get set up, kind of get them fired up sometimes and you can catch two or three in a row. I've had several that have followed it up. One of the keys is you'd never want your jig to go below the crappie. Crappie are a, a game fish, but they're also a bait fish. They're 
a lot of bass down there that'll eat them too and all of their eyes are on the top they're always looking up the crappie always feed up so anything that be below them on anything other you know smaller than a two pound crappie uh, they consider it danger because it's something that it could eat them so when you're when you're working at these crappie I always start up and then work my jig down never start down and work your jig up you get a lot more bites that way Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury Go Boldly Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor. Powered by passion. Glacier Outdoor. Outdoors since 1982. It's that horizontal jig with that just right in the right in the roof of the mouth. Tungsten bead about two feet up. Another solid. Now we're getting on a little bit of a roll here. Like I said, not giants, but that's probably a 10 inch crappie. Like I said, throwing little custom hair jigs. Eighth ounce custom hair jig. Probably about a nine and a half, 10 inch crappie. Ooh, something got a hold of that one. Took a bite out of it when it was smaller. But uh, one of the things that I did that was key today when I realized that the bite was finicky was I really trimmed that tail down on that jig. There's barely any marabou, barely any hair sticking off of that jig. Just really made a smaller profile. Started to get a few more bites after we did that. All right, let's see if we can catch another good one. There's another solid one. Boy, it's been an interesting day out here at Lake Eufaula looking for late fall crappie. Ran into some warm water temperatures, a little bit of wind, and a lot of active bait that had the fish really lethargic and finicky. Uh, you could see them coming up, you could see them nipping at the bait, but we stuck with it. I downsized my crappie jig here on Lake Eufaula and caught several of these really nice Probably a 12 and a half, 13 inch crappie just like this. We'll let him go. As a general rule of thumb, I like to start looking in about uh, 10 foot of water and I'll go out all the way to 20 to 25 foot of water. Uh, and the beautiful thing about when you're crappie fishing is it doesn't take long to figure out if the fish are there or not. Uh, you can typically see them very quickly. You can get them to react to a bait really quickly. So this time of the year, I like to look main lake, uh, transition areas, pay attention to what the bottom composition is, mud, rock, pea, gravel, that type of thing. Uh, and then whether they're on uh, related to to giant like blowdowns, laydowns, uh, the tips of that that are out in that 10 to 15 foot of water are completely isolated, may either man-made like spider block brush piles or uh, sunken uh, wood brush piles offshore all the way out to 25. That's a good one. Nope, another little guy. Made a sh small change to a chartreuse right there. And got bit, you can never go wrong with chartreuse for crappie. There's a good one. That right there is just a solid, I'm calling it eater crappie. But it's amazing how there can be so many fish down there and it's so finicky. That horizontal jig with that just right in the right in the roof of the mouth. Tungsten bead about two feet up. Nice little fall crappie. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by 
Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Visit Mississippi. Wanderers welcome. Powerful. Total boat control. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right on over to your Ask a Pro question for this week. Juan would like to know, do you take a break when fishing? For an answer, we asked MLF angler Matt Becker. Uh, let's see, my question was, do you take a break when fishing? And the answer would be, that kind of depends on how your day's going. You know, if you're having a bad day, sometimes it's, it's super key. Just take a break, sit down, have a drink of water, eat something, get your mind right, get back out there, then you're completely focused, just a little regroup. Sometimes I'll even take a break, just organize my rods a little bit throughout the day or throughout practice. Just that little group or little break allows me to regroup and get back focused, back out there catching bass. Thanks so much, Matt. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow that Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Here's today's Right Stuff presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right, the setup for these crappie are, are fairly basic. Um, I have a buddy who's gotten into tying jigs and he's tied just a, a number of different colors day in and day out. Your black and chartreuse, your chartreuse and whites, and your pinks and blacks are going to be hard to beat. They really seem to like orange on Eufaula, so I have a lot with an orange head. I have some that's marabou, but primarily it's just hair in a number of different colors. I like the pink head on it. I mentioned that bead earlier, and this is a really cool setup that just allows you to, to maintain your line. I mean, that is a lot of line and a very small jig that you're working with. So I'll cut it off and re-rig it really quick. All you're gonna need is a tungsten bead that you can order online or in any tackle shop, just a, just a straight bead, two bobber stops in your crappie jig, and you're simply gonna use the bobber stop. You're gonna put a bobber stop on first, slide it up your braid, Take one of these tungsten beads that really show up on your forward facing sonar and add weight to allow the crappie jig to get down but still act natural. Slide it on. Then you're going to add another bobber stop after your tungsten bead. I can go all day sometimes and never have to retie this, but now you have a tungsten bead that you can adjust the height and the distance away from the crappie jig. The other thing that's really important when you're crappie fishing or doing a vertical presentation is to tie a loop knot. So I'm gonna take my crappie jig and I'm just gonna tie a basic loop knot. They call it a rappelin knot or a loop knot. Overhand knot through the eye of the bait, back through and wrap it. Take an evening Look up some YouTube tutorials. You can really figure out how to tie a loop knot fairly quick. I'm gonna go back through. And then back through the line that I just came, tie it all together. And you can cinch it down, make it as tight as you want. It doesn't really seem to matter. The thing is that pendulum. So when the knot gets above, if you don't, that bait is gonna be vertical in the water. Minnows don't swim vertically like that. With the loop knot, it's going to allow a horizontal presentation for that jig. So when you're holding it in front of the crappie's face, shaking it using this system, very lifelike presentation. Hope you learned something about a little bit of late fall, early winter crappie fishing when the fish are finicky around brush piles. We'll see you next week. <laughs>